Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us in worship in our sanctuary and online. I'm Jim Kaplan, a Beth Torah member, and I'm pleased to lead worship tonight as Shaliach Tzibur, an emissary of our congregation. I'm joined by Leslie Zucker, our music director, and by Warren Sickle on clarinet, and by our technical team. Thank you to the Beyond Our Walls BOW committee for keeping us connected and to our digital docents for managing the streaming of our worship. If you're technically inclined and you would like to help, please contact the office staff for more information about volunteering. If you're joining us on one of our virtual platforms, the links to a PDF of the prayer pages and other information will be posted in the comments section to my left or above the virtual sanctuary player or are available in our e-news. For those at home, the pages in your PDF packet are assembled in order. For those here with us tonight, the prayer pages I call are the blue page numbers in the brackets. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, please wish the community Shabbat Shalom in the comments section and send your hello by pressing enter. For immediate technological help, uh, you may reach out to the CBT's technical assistance line, TAL, at 913-303-1134. Text your phone number, and a docent will call you as soon as they can. Speaking of phones, if you are here tonight, please silence your electronic devices. We welcome Shabbat together by lighting the Shabbat candles. The blessing is on page 120. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kirshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu le'hadlik ne'er, le'hadlik ne'er, Shel Shabbat. On page 130, we join in singing the first two lines of Psalm 95, which begins, Come, let us sing joyously to Adonai. We greet Shabbat on page 138 with Lachad Odi, verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. Shamor v'zachor b'dibor echad Yishmi anu el ha'meyuchad Adonai echad u'shemo echad L'shem ulti feret velit chila La 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 Lekat lekat kala V'nei p'nei shabat mekabala 
the Kalakana deal, they crack the crack a la, Pene Pene Shabbat Nakabala. Kilalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
shall love Adonai with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your Teach them diligently unto your children, unto your children. and you shall speak of them when you sit in your house, sit in your house when you walk by the way, and when you Micha Mocha, page 158. Ha 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 ha. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Please join me on page 160. Grant, O God, that we lie down in peace and raise us up, our guardians, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel. For your name's sake, be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our gar going and coming to life and to peace evermore. Blessed are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. <laughs>
together on pages 164 through 173, and then we continue reading silently to page 180, adding the prayers that are in your hearts. When you have completed your prayers, please be seated. Page 173. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Atadonai Mekadesh HaShabbat.
The Mishabarach prayer asks for healing. There is a list for some, of some who need our prayers of healing, be it emotional, spiritual, or physical, in the e-news that you received this morning. The link is also at the le on my left in the comments. If you have additional names to add, please type them in the comments section now so that we may include them in our prayers. For those who are here with us, we offer an opportunity to identify others who may need our prayers. The words to the Mishaberah are on page 371. who help support those who are in need. May those who care for the sick with their hands, their voices, and their hearts be blessed with courage and stamina. May those who pursue healing through medical skills and knowledge be blessed with insight, patience, and compassion. May all of us, the sick and the well together, find courage and hope, and let us say, Amen. This time, if you're so moved at home, please share a special simcha, a joy, something from the past week by typing your simcha in the comments line. It may include birthdays, anniversaries, good news, or an accomplishment of any kind. Please just use a few words and press enter. 
For those of you who are here in person, we invite you to join us here at the Simcha mic, that microphone right there. We ask that you come up one person or pod at a time to maintain a social distance, and please refrain from touching the microphone. It's very sensitive about being touched, and our tech team will be certain that everyone can hear you. Thanks. Oh, and tell people who you are. Hello, I'm Carol, and some of you are brand new, so I can't say that everybody knows me, but a lot of you do. This week has been <clears throat> a little bit up and down, so I fell, and then I chastised myself because I fell and had a little trouble, but it wasn't serious. I didn't have to go to the ER or anything like that, but it was annoying, and I beat myself up about it. So on Wednesday, I decided to have a pity party, and then on Thursday, I said, enough of the pity party, it's time to to get back to work, and so I was very busy on, on oh, Thursday. But I did so much on Thursday that I couldn't do much today, but I didn't sink all the way down. I got sort of in the middle, and I accomplished several things, and so I guess I'm really happy that it's Shabbat, and it's all over. Thank you. Carol, I think your coat is my simcha today. <laughs> I, it is beautiful. I love it. And here's another fine garment. Y'all are really dressed nicely tonight. I love it. And my grandson turned five on Monday. So it's been my custom to try to find a midrash or a Hasidic tale to recount in honor of your simchas. And this week my search was inspired by the multiple stories that are in Parshat Vayera. The midrash tells us, a sly fox passed a lovely, a lovely vineyard. A tall, thick fence surrounded the vineyard on all sides. As the fox circled around the fence, he found a small hole in the fence, barely large enough for him to push his head through. The fox could see what luscious grapes grew in the vineyard, and his mouth began to water but the hole was too small for him. So what did the sly fox do? He fasted for three days until he became so thin that he managed to slip through the hole. Now, inside the vineyard, the fox began to eat to his heart's content. He grew bigger and fatter than ever before, and he wanted to get out of the vineyard, but alas, the hole was too small again. So what did he do? He fasted for three days again, and then managed to slip through the hole and out again. Turning his head toward the vineyard, the poor fox said, Vineyard, O oh vineyard, how lovely you look, and how lovely are your fruits and vines, but what good are you to me? Just as I came to you, so I leave you. And so the sages say, it's also the same in this world. It's a beautiful world, but in the words of King Solomon, just as we come into this world empty-handed, so we leave it. Only the Torah we studied, the mitzvot we performed, and the good deeds we practice are the real fruits which we can carry with us. We now gather all the simchas that you've shared with us as I offer this prayer. Divine source of blessing, we thank you for everything that enriches our lives. We turn to you now with gratitude as we join in the happiness of all who mark the varied simchas and blessings they have shared. Adonai be with them now and always. May they be blessed with the strength to overcome sickness and sorrow and with much health and happiness now and always. As we honor each one of you for the gifts that you bring to our sacred community, we join together in song as we mark this sacred occasion. Baruch So, 
Imagine that you're watching a TV sitcom. Now that's not tough to imagine because even those who try to avoid the insipid material on TV have found themselves stuck at home during this COVID pandemic and the plethora of streaming situation comedies beckons us. Two characters are sitting at a table in a cafeteria. Character one has a cup of coffee in hand. Character two sits across the small table and they're conversing. Imagine two characters in a rerun of Big Bang Theory, for example. Character one, Leonard, says, did anyone ever find that toxic sludge that was lost? And character one begins to sip his coffee. Character two, Sheldon says, yes, I found it. I put it in the coffee pot until I could get it to the lab. <laughs> character one spits the coffee all over the table and all over his friend. This scenario is famously known as the spit take. Now, Wikipedia defines a spit take as a comedic technique of re or reaction when someone spits a drink, or sometimes food, out of their mouth as a reaction to a surprising or a funny statement. Timing is critical. One character fills their mouth just before the punchline, and the other character delivers the punchline of the joke so that the explosion of shock or laughter is not only unavoidable, but serves to accentuate the stunning nature of the revelation. The term spit take entered the Oxford Dictionary in 2014 and the Merriam-Webster Dictionary more recently in April 2019. Legend has it that Danny Thomas was the comedian who first made the spit take famous in his series, The Danny Thomas Show, which ran from 1953 to 1964. Other scholars argue that it was first seen when Ricky Ricardo performed a spit take in I Love Lucy in 1951. The spit part of the name is obvious, but the take part is a little less clear. Online scholars, if there are such things, conclude that the take refers to a visible response or reaction to something unexpected, similar to the phrase double take. <laughs> so like when you see somebody wearing white after Yom Kippur, for example. Um, this week, we read from Parshat Vayera. The Parsha opens with Abraham sitting in his tent by a cluster of oak trees at Mamre, looking out, as he often did, apparently. It was the heat of midday, and Abraham, currently 99 years old, was recovering from the painful self-performed circumcision he had accomplished uh, three days ago. Thankfully, that ended last week's Parsha, Lech Lecha, so I don't have to talk about it any further tonight. Several midrashim about this verse explain that Abraham was always actively seeking visitors, and Talmud scholar Lewis Ginsburg points out that Abraham's tent was open on all four sides so he could see visitors coming from any direction and welcome them. This ritual of hachnasat orchim, welcoming guests, is modeled by Abraham and is one of the many ethical principles that Abraham and Sarah introduced to us in Vayera that are repeated throughout the Torah. In general, Hachnasat Orchim turns out to have good outcomes in the Torah. Abraham, and subsequently Lot, Laban, Manoah, each welcome strangers, and ultimately these strangers turn out to be Malachim, or God's messengers, or angels, most often with positive results. The practice of welcoming the stranger is an extremely important ethical ritual. And let me just quickly paraphrase the scene that opens Vayera so we can dig in a little bit deeper. Adonai appeared to him, Abraham, by the terebinths of Mamre. Abraham was sitting at the entrance of the tent as the day grew hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing near him. As soon as he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, My lords, if it please you, do not go past your servant. Let a little water be brought. Bathe your feet and recline under the tree. And let me fetch a morsel of bread, and you may refresh yourselves. Then go on, seeing that you have come your servant's way." They replied, do as you have said. Then Abraham runs into the tent and tells Sarah and one of her servants to make some bread and cook some veal and pour some milk for the guests. Yeah, I know, but there were no kosher regulations in those days, so veal and milk. Um, Rashi says that the first few words of the parsha introduce the scene, God appears to Abraham. God is coming to check up on Abraham, making a visit to the sick, you know, after the circumcision that I said I wasn't gonna talk about. On the other hand, this one phrase establishes the importance of visiting the sick, bikur cholim. If God does it, and we seek to behave b'tselem Elohim in God's image, it follows that we should adopt the ethical ritual of visiting the sick. And so how do you do this? 
well, there's no prescribed behavior. You just appear. God didn't need to say anything, so apparently you just need to be there. I recall that when the moment gets painfully emotional at the bedside of the sick or of a grieving family, we were taught in med school that it's best to let silence do the heavy lifting. This halachic lesson was apparently taught thousands of years before my training, but remains an insightful and a compassionate approach. After that, Parshat Vayera says that Abraham looked up and saw three men. Note the text tells, text tells us appropriately that he was beneath the angels, that is, looking up. Time passes, and he serves the strangers, performing acts of hospitality, hachnasad orchim. And by the end of the scene, one of the Hasidic uh, sages teaches us that Abraham stands above them, omed alechem, showing that kindness to strangers lifts us up even higher than angels. The principle is known as gedola hachnasad orchim mikabalat penei hashechina, Greater is hospitality than welcoming the divine presence. Bam, another ethic, uh, ethical ritual lesson learned. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs points out that the translation into English loses a little bit for us in this paragraph. As soon as Abraham sees the three angels, or the three men as they initially appear to be, he says, Adonai, if it please you, do not go past your servant. As it's tra translated in both the Plaut Chumash that we use and Eitz Chaim, the word Adonai is the issue here. Since there are no vowels in the Torah, Adonai in this instance may be my sirs or my lords, or it might be Adonai, referring to God. This apparently troubled Rashi tremendously, and the sentence either reads, Adonai, hang on a minute, I'll get back to you. Do not go past your servants, uh, you guys. Or it reads, my sirs, please do not go past your servant, may I offer you a little bit of hospitality. So either interpretation underscores the importance of hachnasad orchim, hospitality. The first translation, putting Abraham's conversation with God on hold to attend to the visitors, certainly establishes great importance to hospitality. The latter interpretation, Adonai translated as my sirs, according to Rabbi Sachs, reminds us to see a little bit of God in everyone we encounter, making each visit, visit a soul-enriching experience seeing every person as a tiny part of seeing God. Finally, back to the spit take moment. After Abraham welcomes the angels, the malachim, the messengers, and feeds them and attends to their comfort, they say to him, where is your wife Sarah? Now, this possibly should have been a tip off that this was not a usual encounter, since there was no mention of Sarah's name that had come up in the conversation so far. But regardless, they say, so where's your wife Sarah? And he says, she's there in the tent says Abraham. One of the angels tells Abraham, next year I'll come back and your wife Sarah will have a son. Great op opportunity for Abraham to do a spit take. <laughs> but he doesn't do it. Sarah is listening outside the tent. Sarah, now 90 years old, laughed to herself, Vatitsa Sarah Bekirba. Sarah laughed inside. Now the Midrash tells us that Sarah looked inside at her withered parts and laughed, or maybe just laughed inside. Uh, it depends on where you put the, how you spell out that expression. She then responded, now that I am withered, am I to have enjoyment with my husband so old? Another opportunity for Sarah to do a spit take. <laughs> this time so powerful that in retelling to Abraham, even God tells Abraham that Sarah laughed. Sarah lies saying, I didn't laugh. God says, you did laugh. <laughs> but God, being God, softens the blow to Abraham. The Torah quotes God in this scene as saying to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying, shall I in truth bear a child old as I am? Now, a minute ago, we were just told that Sarah actually said, am I to have enjoyment with my husband so old? The sages have a heyday with this interchange. In Vayikra Rabbah, we read that God tells Abraham the interchange and presents Sarah's insult as self-deprecating rather than insulting his fragile male ego. Rabbi Dan Moskowitz tells us, to put it plainly, God lies. But it's a lie with a higher purpose. And it turns out that there's actually a Hebrew expression for this type of statement. It's emet shel chesed, a kind and loving truth. The propriety of these truths was a source of a debate between the scholarly schools of Hillel and Shammai. The subject was, what do you say to an ugly bride on her wedding day? Shammai said, tell the truth and call it as you see it. Hillel said, one should comment that 
Every bride is beautiful on her wedding day. As usual, Hillel wins. The principle of Emet Shel Chesed is closely related to the ethical principle of Shalom Bayit, peace in the home, in this example. In Vayera, we learn that God spared Abraham, and probably Sarah, humiliation by retelling Sarah's response with less sting to Abraham. God preserved Shalom Bayit using a softer truth, and it was a mitzvah. And you'll recall that in our morning service each day, we describe ethical precepts that are so virtuous that the reward is not only in this world, but in the world to come. One of these ethical values is fostering peace between people. And it's this mitzvah that God models in this week's parsha. The sages caution us, however, that while God can readily discern with accuracy when emet shel chesed is the most compassionate approach, we must first check our kavanah, our intention, before we speak so that we don't slip into the increasingly prevalent habit of truthless commentary that surrounds us so much these days. So there's a lot in Vayera. And in just the first few handfuls of lines, we learn about hospitality, welcoming the stranger. We learn about visiting the sick, Bikur Cholim, and how to be present for those in need. And we learn about Emet Shel Chesed, truth with kindness, and the importance of fostering Shalom Bayit, a peaceful home, and peace between the people around us. After reading this, I realize I have a lot to work on this week. May we each have success in the pursuit of our ethical goals. Kain Yehir Etzon. The rabbis of the 14th century added the Aleinu to the closing of each worship service to end the service on a hopeful note. No matter what our days are like now, our best days lie ahead. The Aleinu is on pages 596 and 591. Please rise. Aleinu <laughs> La tate kirula leot se brechit, Shelo asanu kego ye harasot, Velo samanu kemish machot hadama, Shelo sam chel kenu kahem, Vego hora lenu kehol hamonam, Banach nu korim, Umishtachavim umodim, Lifne malech. Malchei hamlachim hakadosh baruch hu. We read together uh, paragraph number three at the bottom of page 593. The light of, li the light of life is a finite flame. Like the Shabbat candles, life is kindled, it burns, it glows, it is radiant with warmth and beauty, but soon it fades, its substance is consumed, and it is no more. In light we see, in light we are seen. The flames dance and our life burns down in gutters. There is an end to the flames. We see no more, and we are no more seen. And yet we do not despair, for we are more than a memory, slowly fading into the darkness. With our lives we give life, some, something of us can never die. We move in the eternal cycle of darkness and death, of light and life. This week, we remember those who were laid to rest I, and whose um, loved ones are in the Shoshim period. Lori Phillips, 
loved one of Paula Fremerman and Marsha Rittmaster, Sue Lynn Botwin Hurwitz, Congregation Beth Torah member, Jim Merrill, husband of Ellen Merrill and stepfather of Reagan Siegel, and those whose yurt sites occur this week, Erwin Block, Estelle Bloom, Irving Bloom, Johanna Bowbreaker, Edgar Broughton, David Cantor, Jesse Cohn, Betty Barbara Decker, Lucille Ellis, Bertha Hellman, Betty Horton, Mary Lerner, Joseph Optican, Michael Rubin, Mary Patricia Pat Sylvia, Bess Trainen, Joan Wenz, Deborah Marlene Slade Zach. If you are here to say Kaddish for someone whose name I did not read, please let us know their names so we may include them in our prayers. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing. Kaddish Yatom is on page 598. We stand as a community to support those in mourning. Yit Gadal, Yit Gadash, Shemei Rabbah, Be'alma, Divra, Chirute, Ve'amlich, Malchute, Ve'chayechonu, Ve'yomechonu, Ve'chayeh, Dechol, Be'it Yisrael, Ba'galal, Vizman, Kariv, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shemei Rabbah, Mavarach, Le'olam, Olmei, Olmaya, Yit Barach, Ve'yishtabach, Ve'pa'ar, Ve'yitramam, Ve'yitnaseh, Ve'yitadar, Ve'yitalev, Ve'yitalal, Shemei, Dekudusha, Berichu, Le'ela, Min Kol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbachata, Venechemata, Da Amiran Bilma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shmaya, Vechaim Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav. Uyase shalom aleinu Ve'alchu Yisrael Ve'imru Ve'imru Amen When we have some announcements, I invite Aviva Simons to come up to the music. Shabbat Shalom. First, thank you very much to Dr. Jim Kaplan, Leslie Zucker, Warren Sickle, Dave Zucker, and our whole team for making this service possible. So thank you very much. So before we look ahead, first a quick look back. On Wednesday, 32 people came to Beth Torah to donate blood. So they literally rolled up their sleeve and saved many, many, many lives. So thank you to everyone who donated, who came, who baked for it. And in Karen Logia's words, one of our fellow members, she donates at Beth Torah to one, fulfill this mitzvah with Beth Torah friends, and two, to eat Marsha Rittmaster's all-famous mandel bread. <laughs> so it's the best of both worlds. So whatever your reason, we have another blood drive in February, just after Valentine's Day. So we're looking forward to saving more lives in the future. Tomorrow morning, our celebration of Shabbat continues with Sichat Shabbat, our Shabbat conversation at 9 o'clock a.m., and then our Shabbat morning service at 10.30. So all are welcome to join us in person and online. And believe it or not, we are approaching the end of October. So next week is October 29th, meaning the end of the month. <laughs> so we'll come back here for our Friday night service at 6.30. Looking ahead, we are very honored that Todd Stetner, um, a retired Jewish professional in Kansas City, will be coming to speak to us on Friday, November 12th. This is the day after Veterans Day. And Todd, in fact, um, studies the Civil War. So he will be sharing with us about soldiers, sailors, and spies, Jews in the Civil War on both sides. So what will happen is the service will begin at 6.30 like normal, and immediately following the service, Todd will speak from here. So everyone at home, it's the same exact live stream, nothing new to click, 
just stay with us, and I'm really looking forward to learning with him. And also, if you are thinking about Hanukkah, which I know we're thinking about Hanukkah, and you are a current CBT member, join our Hanukkah volunteer choir. You can talk to Leslie, and rehearsals start this week, so now is the time. Last but not least, oops, um, please download our app. We are uh, really going to be using it in the very near future. So download it. You can search CBT Synagogue in your app store, and it will come up. And very last but not least, thank you very much to Paula Fremerman for sponsoring tonight's To Go Oneg, Oneg To Go, in loving memory of her son, Michael Rubin. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you. <clears throat> Our closing song will be Ain Kelohenu. It's on page 626. And please rise and join us. Ain Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Take care of each other out there.